What's up? Welcome back to the worm. This is an exciting day. It's the 4th of July, which I didn't really know about until uh, last night when I thought the forest was erupting with cannon fire. I thought it was guns for a while, but there's really nobody around here. Then I realized it was fireworks. It was a, must have been a big show somewhere. So I am taking the day off. It's been raining on and off. It's going to rain on and off the rest of the day, but I'm taking the day off from work. Can you believe I call it work? From cabin building. I've just spent uh, the better part of five hours drinking coffee and reading a book. I do feel a little bit like I'm about to have a heart attack and it's already noon, so I better get better get started on my plan for the day. Wanted to let you in on a, a lifelong goal that finally came true. I remember making a, a wish list for like birthday presents or Christmas presents when I was a little kid and there were three things that were on it pretty much my entire life. I wanted a telescope, a microscope, and a robot. <laughs> I think when I was probably, eh, probably took until I was in my 20s to take the robot off the list. And I've used uh, cheap telescopes before and just really wasn't that impressed, but I've always, always, always wanted a microscope. And I finally made it happen in enormous fashion. You gotta check this out. By the way, to, to celebrate the 4th of July correctly today, I'm planning on shooting twice. I'm gonna go shooting in a second here. I'm gonna shoot, I think I decided I'm gonna shoot a single action revolver first, cause that seems, you know, more of a midday thing. And then I'll shoot my uh, semi-auto 22 later on. I'm gonna do the laps of my walking shooting range. I'm also gonna try to eat a bratwurst for every meal. It's noon, I haven't eaten breakfast, so I'm gonna have to get on that pretty quick. Otherwise, I want to go for a walk in the woods and just find a bunch of random stuff to look at under the microscope. Did I say microscope? Oh, I meant microscopes. The mushrooms are just starting to come up, so I want to take a look at those too. But anyway, anyway, check this out. I've been saving literally for years for these. They're not really that expensive. They look very fancy. I think they're a few hundred and something bucks a piece. This is a stereo microscope, like a dissecting microscope. So I think it's maybe like five or 10 to 80 power. And then this is a regular compound microscope like you'd use in a science class or something that is 40 to several hundred power. So that's more for looking at stuff on like a cellular level. I've looked at some pollen grains on it from a couple different kinds of flowers and from the pine trees that are putting pollen all over the place. So you probably wonder how a total cheapskate like me ended up buying these. For almost all of my adult life, I look at buying stuff. You've heard me say this a thousand times, but buying stuff is just hours you have to go to work. And I'd rather not be at work. I'd rather be out in the woods playing. But for a very long time, I've had a credit card that instead of getting airline miles, it gives you cash back. And I've allowed myself to use that cash back money on whatever I wanted. And it's been, it's been years I've been looking at microscopes, trying to figure out which one to get. I couldn't figure out if I wanted a stereo or a compound microscope. So I don't know, like a couple years ago, I looked at them. And then a year ago, I looked at them and I just couldn't decide which one to get. So I kept saving and saving and saving, letting that money build up until I had exactly the dollar amount to get both of them. <laughs> so yeah, I think it took... I think it took a little over three years of saving that money up and I'm so freaking excited. I've looked at a whole bunch of bugs that I've been collecting. I know that doesn't that look disgusting. It is kind of disgusting until you get them out and look at them one by one. These are uh, bugs that Sarah and I have already looked at under the microscope. Then I also have uh, some dragonflies in here and this is the newest collection that I haven't looked at yet, so maybe I'll get to those today. Got some really big spiders and some of those nasty biting flies that have been harassing me for a while. Oh, and also, I've been listening to uh, the Seeger sessions all morning. If you guys have ever heard heard or seen the videos of that, that's Bruce Springsteen doing, I think is a two album set of just covers of Pete Seeger tunes. Pete Seeger is kind of Americana. I mean, he was exceedingly controversial back in the day, but that was, I think back in the day was about 70 years ago. So hopefully the controversy has died down a little bit. If you haven't heard it, listen to it. It's a great set of albums. All right, got to get a fire going. Got to do some shooting. Got to get some bratwurst going. So much to do. It's always my goal when I make a fire like this to burn up as much wood as possible. This what's left right here is about 
one day worth of uh, tree cutting. All right, let's let the cooking fire warm up. Go do some shooting, see if there's anything we need to see under the microscope. The problem is, like, everything looks cool under a microscope. Everything. Whoa. Check that thing out. Oh my gosh, those are the biggest slugs I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, look at all, look at all of them. I think this is a star flower. It looks like it already flowered, but the uh, little seed pod might be cool to look at. Whoa, that's cool stuff. Oh snap, raspberries, already? It's tiny, oh it's not quite ready. Yeah, it's pretty close to ready. I truly think that fresh wild raspberries are the best flavor there is on the planet. Oh, it's so amazing. Oh, nope, there's some more unreasonably good. Some really great mosses and lichens and stuff around here too. That'll look weird. Ooh, look at that sucker. You really could just sit down in like one square foot and find 11,000 things to look at under a microscope. It's not really necessary to walk around. But then again, you can't really shoot too many targets from just sitting in one spot, you know? Moss is always cool under a microscope. I guess you don't need this whole thing, though. I think these are one of the prettiest flowers in the woods, if you ask me. Aren't they gorgeous? I don't know if you remember the video I did uh, surveying, trying to figure out where I was going to cut all those cedars down. This is the corner of the property I started on, and then went along that away. You can see all the ribbons up in the trees there. Oh, I forgot, I got new, uh, new flippy targets here. Oh, my brain still finds this so confusing. I've, I don't know how many times I've walked this shooting range and done this loop and you come around here, there's a target right back in there. And they're used to this being solid forest. This is where I cut all the cedars from my cabin siding. Man, I gotta skip the last target. I'm getting way too hungry. I usually can't wait past eight o'clock to eat breakfast. I think it's like, one. <laughs> it's not good. You should always eat at least every hour. Oh, these biting flies are making me crazy too. Messes with your head because it's drizzling at the same time. You see one fly flying or cruising around in front of your face and then you feel a couple raindrops and I just keep smacking myself silly thinking it's a fly. See, I need to eat. I'm losing my mind. crazy thing is too, there's certain species of fly is like a 
motion sensitive fly when I drive down one of the trails where they like to hang out where they live and if I drive down on the four-wheeler in first gear and just go slow like two miles an hour nothing you put it in second gear you get going and they just dive bomb you dive bomb you bite you they're the ones that actually bite a hole in you and then they drink the blood kind of nasty creatures life's just full of inconveniences isn't it yep i just got uh i don't know uh five ten big welts on the back of my head i think they actually like deet they're bastards oh i'm so excited for this sausage <laughs> You know, if it ever looks fun, me living out here like this, it's because it really is. I think it's probably even more fun than it looks on video. You know, if you wake up, you want to go shoot 22s all day, or you want to go collect bugs or whatever, you just do it. I mean, the only thing that you have to do to live like this is don't spend any money. That's the takeaway from this whole two plus year experiment is if you get the property and you don't spend money on anything, you can hang out in the woods for a pretty long time. You should give it a try. You'd probably like it. <laughs> should probably eat something other than sausage for breakfast, huh? <laughs> it's a holiday. You do whatever you want. You can do the same. I won't tell anyone. Just gonna grab a couple mushrooms to look at, and the slugs ate them all since yesterday. <laughs> Look at the size of these thistles. <laughs> Can you see that? Is that like seven feet tall? They are gnarly looking. Man, you wouldn't want to fall into one of those. Look at the leaves on these things. They just look like they want to eat you alive. You wouldn't think anything would like these plants, but all the daddy long legs hang out on there. By the way, you ever notice on a daddy long legs, you know, their body is just like one kind of oval. If you look at right on top, it would be like right here on their head, just like on the top of their head. There's a little black spot. I bet you never wondered what that is. It's like an extra little head with extra eyeballs on it. How weird is that? See, and that's why microscopes are so freaking cool. I really want to go in and microscope, but I got to make my lunches for the next few days whenever I have a down day like this. So it's not in the middle of the day when I'm working. I usually try to make lunch for three, four, five days. Of course, I'm making my cheese dip, I guess you call it. Put a whole bunch of stuff in a pan and eat it with uh, tortilla chips. Got to make a batch of that real quick. I'm sure I've made this in other videos, but I do vary up the kind of meat. Sometimes chicken, ground beef, steak, whatever. Some kind of peppers. I don't know. We got chipotle peppers. I don't know what this is. Fire roasted whole peppers, Torados. Didn't know what that one was, so I got it. Let's put that one in. So we choose a pepper, choose a meat. I always put corn in there. It's good filler. Not not bad for you. And then I usually pick a different bean, either refried beans or black beans. But I got red and dark red kidney beans this time. I don't know. Never had these either. Then whatever kind of veggies, tomatoes, onions, whatever. I actually don't have any veggies right now, so if I go out in the next couple days, I'll get some, fry them up, and then dump them in this. And you can kind of keep changing it day after day, too. Just keep adding other stuff as it runs low. And then, of course, I always put a can of lab cheese in it. That's actually what it's all about. Whenever I buy lab cheese, too, and peppers, all this stuff, I just get as many different kinds as I can, and then mix them together each time in a different batch. Just You get a little bit different flavor. Oh, and I found like a 50 cent thing of fajita seasoning mix. I might throw some of that in there too. Let's try it out. It's also good to make this uh, dip on days that I have a fire. Just gotta pour off these cans and stuff and I can't just pour them on the ground so it attracts animals. If I didn't have a fire to dispose of the juice, I mean, you still have to dump it in there and then keep the fire going for a long time to make sure you burn up all the smell. But if I don't have that, then I save my bar oil jugs and I dump the off gassing, off juicing of the cans in there, and then eventually I have to find some place to dump it. Whoa, I'm excited about these peppers. Look at the color of this stuff. Whoa, it's like syrup or Coca-Cola or something coming off of there. 
Anybody that's watched all the videos knows I love spicy food. I collect hot sauce. I mean, I haven't collected it since I've been out here, but normally I do. Whoa. Look at these things. They are whole. And they are, they do look like they're actually fire roasted because the skin's black and sliding off of there. Oh my gosh. Those are amazing. It's like rich. It's a little bit spicy, rich, salty, but mostly it's like a, like an umami flavor or something. Oh my gosh. Wow. Get some of those. I don't know where they came from. I think maybe Walmart. There has to be like beef fat in there or something. Oh, soy sauce. Now it makes more sense. Onion, vinegar, water, salt, soybean oil, and garlic. Soy sauce and peppers, who knew? Might as well leave those in big chunks. Oh, yeah. Wow. Red beans. I wonder what kind of bean that is. Just a red bean. It looks like a pink bean to me. It's kind of gross. Oh, I forgot rice. Rice and beans in there for your protein. I don't think I have any rice. It's definitely, I'm forgetting an uh, ingredient and I can't think of what it is besides the rice. That's a very different flavor than my normal mix. I don't know. It eats. All I really want is a lot of calories and I want it really easy. If I don't have easy calories for lunch, I just don't eat. All right, let's have a look-see. We got a pretty good selection here. Flowers and moss and stuff. Got a few different mushrooms. This is a shelf fungus, an older one. Probably be really interesting to see the spore pattern on the bottom. Some other mushrooms, flowers. Actually, this guy is probably not gonna get used for this kind of stuff. I just found this little uh, bug on the ground when I was sweeping up that looks like he's made out of metal. Let's have a look-see at him, huh? Turn my jackery on and get power here. <laughs> Wild. It does absolutely look like he's made, a, made out of metal. Like copper, like coated in copper. I'm still yet to see a bug or a fly or anything that's not covered in hair as well. I'm going to use uh, this guy for taking pictures so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video and put a link in the description. This thing is really inexpensive and you'll see it takes, for for the amount of money you're paying, it takes amazing pictures and you can really zoom in well. It takes a little while to get used to using it. What I do is use the zoom here, get the zoom close to correct, and then hold it like this and just move the whole thing until it's in focus. I wonder if this is a Sawyer beetle. I've just never seen the reflective bottom on it like that before. That is crazy. Gosh, it's also so weird that the eyes aren't round at all. They're like long and skinny, tall and skinny. So bizarre. Okay, back to bugs later. Let's look at these flowers. Yeah, kind of any flower you put underneath there is going to be amazing. There's also almost nothing you could put underneath here that doesn't have bugs on it. Look at that little yellow guy. Hey, he's kind of cute. Maybe I should put him on a leash, keep him as a pet. Oh yeah, let's look at this lily. This is a test. Do you remember all your flower parts? The stigma and the anthers there. I love the dark red dots on the petals. They're so cool. I don't know if you can see how tiny these flowers are. About a quarter the size of my little fingernail. I don't know what kind of flower this is actually. <laughs> yep, gorgeous. Let's put this whole thistle head on here and see what we can see. 
Yep, of course it would be nothing like what you'd expect. Wow, look at those petals, they're so weird. And of course the thorns are super gnarly. No wonder it hurts. I bet even these little boring yellow flowers will be pretty sweet. They're very reflective. It's like a sticky koosh ball in the middle of it. It's very sticky. Yeah, the petals are just insanely reflective, like super, super glossy. This one's a bunchberry flower. I think this one's called Devil's Paintbrush, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, the flower's so pretty. Oh yeah, well, the stem and the rest of the flower sure looks devilish. Wow. So cool. I feel like you could just zoom in on this forever and it would keep getting more and more bizarre. Look at that. All right, let's look at this big old hard chunk of shelf fungus. Yep, just looks like chocolate. Actually, with this microscope, I could just barely zoom in close enough to see the pores. This is a polypore. Poly is many, pore is pore. Lots of pores. It doesn't have gills like a mushroom you'd normally think of. Man, you sure got to zoom in a long ways to even see the pores in there. I guess there's a third type uh, with teeth, like a lion's mane mushroom you can buy in the grocery store. There might even be another pores, gills, teeth, well, like a puffball mushroom. I wonder what that's called. That doesn't have, maybe it's got pores or gills inside. Who knows, you know? We'll just, we'll just never know. Here's a gill variety. I don't know what this is, if it's uh, some kind of an oyster mushroom. I think, but I do not know. I could be completely wrong. Oh, so cool. And it looks so delicious. Wow. So I think the spores in a gilled mushroom are just on the sides of the gills. They come out of the sides of the gills. You know, pretty much everything I've said thus far in this video may be completely wrong. So, you know, if you want to listen, watch the rest of the video with your fingers and your ears, go right ahead. Never try to learn anything from ringworm videos. Whoa. Whoa. The entire edge of every single gill has like a little tiny moving worm on it. What in the... What in the beep? Well, that's the weirdest thing I've seen so far. Holy cow, it's all moving. I don't understand. The entire thing is alive with... <laughs> With something? What the heck, right? Somebody tell me what this is? We got any mycologists out there? Uh, seriously, what is that? Are you finding that as weird as I am? I don't get what it is. Oh, you know what we need to do? Hold that thought. We'll take a little bit off and we'll put it under the other microscope and see if we can still see what those things are. I mean, is that part of the mushroom? That can't be part of the mushroom. That's why everybody needs a microscope. That's why I've needed one for many, too many decades. Oh, it's so weird. Let's see if we can get one on here. If I can actually get them on the slide. It must be some kind of fly larva. It has to be. Is this what you thought you'd be watching when you clicked on a ringworm video? Ah, oh, I totally got them on there. <laughs> They are indeed worms. They're just sitting on a slide too. You can see totally, they're clear. You can see the insides of them. That is freaking wild. Ooh. All of a sudden it just kind of grossed me out. <laughs> I mean, crazy thing is we're covered with that stuff all the time. Like your entire body is just alive with stuff that isn't you. I think it is. I think this, I think it's like more than 50% of the cells in your body aren't human, aren't yours. They're all the other living things. But I think by mass, the vast majority of you is you. So there are a lot of really tiny things. If you think like bacteria, like the stuff in your guts and all that, eyelash mites and whatnot. Oh man, that is crazy. 
All right. A couple other shrooms to look at. Whoa, see? Just as freaking weird. Completely different. Different mushroom, different animal. Just as weird. Oh my gosh. Uh, I got one of them off with a Q-tip. That's the little bug next to the tip of a scalpel just for, <laughs> for scale. You can just barely see it with the naked eye. But man, it's teeny. I think you got a little bit messed up with the Q-tip. It's kind of hard to get pictures of stuff that small. When I save up for about seven more years, I'll get the camera, a good camera that goes with the microscopes. I think it's some kind of a springtail, actually. It was, uh, when it came off of there, it was bouncing all over the place, and you could see the two little tails on them that they use, they tuck underneath, and they use to shoot themselves around your room. See what it looks like underneath here, if we could see it at all. Yeah, you could see it. He's a creepy little bastard. Yeah, see the little tail they use to jump around? It's not always easy to look at stuff much bigger than this with this microscope because generally backlit so the light has to go up through whatever you're looking at. So you, you put a big bug on there or something you just see black. This guy's not very big so I think some of the light's actually getting through him. Yeah, unfortunately everything I look at I immediately want out of here. <laughs> I just looked, it's already six o'clock. This is every single day out here is too short. Every day. Doesn't matter if I'm out chainsaw building, shooting, playing with microscopes, anything. Every single day is too short. I wake up at like 5 o'clock every day, and before you know it, it's 6, and i got to start putting tools away and showering and eating and all that stuff. Oh, it makes me crazy. Okay, let's real quick look at some what do we got left. Let's look at a couple mosses. This one's definitely going to look weird. Okay, yeah, I mean, totally bizarre looking. Next one. Oh yeah, this is that weird lichen. I mean, even without a microscope, it looks it looks like plastic. Wow, yeah, definitely does not look real. Oh yeah, it's the little star flower. I don't know what you call it after it's fertilized and the petals fall off. I don't think it's quite a seed pod yet, but yeah, just looks like something tasty, like a cantaloupe. <laughs> Another piece of moss. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> Actually, the bottom side is even weirder. Okay, last one, then I have to quit. I got one more really weird mushroom here. Actually, I actually have no idea. It's a polypore, too, and it's like orange and furry on top. And it's totally alive with stuff. Not not worms, just other stuff. Let's see what the other side looks like. The pore side. Oh yeah, you can see the pores a whole lot better on this one. Wow. Okay, gotta be done. Need another snossage. Gotta go shoot around. Grab a shower. I got so carried away, I was going to go down and play guitar for a couple hours, too. Too much good stuff to do. Man, I really wanted to play today. Oh, well. We got a lot of hot days coming up where I'm not going to work in the middle of the day, so I'll get my guitar playing in. I did it. Three meals. They weren't spaced out very well, but... All right. One more lap. Man, I feel like I might need to shower twice after looking at all those creepy crawlies. y'all thanks for watching thanks for enjoying the uh, fourth of july with me i'm not really sure anyway that it could have been a better fourth i feel like a a right proper american you know 
eating tube steak and uh, shooting guns. Next week we'll be back to building on the cabin. I'm starting to get a little bit excited about the cabin. More than anything, I'm looking forward to tricking out the inside of it. Of course, there's a little bit to be done before the cabin even has an inside. Hopefully you guys were into the microscoping. Uh, you can let me know in the comments if you want, if you're into that. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use those a lot. So if you guys wanna see some more in the future, just let me know. I'll take pictures and videos and whatnot for you. All right, time to get clean. See you in a week.